Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Oh, hi! Yeah. Hi, everybody! Hey, Welcome hey. to Tuesdays with Stories. Woo-wee. I'm Larry Bird. This is Kevin McHale. We're the Boston Celtics, and it's good to see you. Hey, good to be back. What is a Celtic? I think it's supposed to be Celtics. We've been saying it wrong. That's is right, that Boston. Right? Yeah. Oh, well, you guys are Irish. You'd think you'd get it right over there. Yeah, it should be the Boston Celtics. By the way, my first joke ever, I told you before, I'm sure. Oh, you, you, let's hear it. Well, I went to the uh, Celtics game. A lot of empty seats for a team called the Celtics. Hey! <laughs> and that, like was my, that was a hot one for like a good six months. Hey, that's a joke, folks. I, uh, I had a similar uh, kind of a wordy. Hey, uh, ladies, there's no, uh, there's no lesbian bars. What about clits? It'd be great because men couldn't find it. Hey, that's not bad. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's better than anything you got. That's good stuff. I always get boo. I get the groan. You know, people groan when when it's very jokey. But I'm like, you couldn't come up with it. You come guzzled Nazi. I feel the same way on Twitter. They're like, they're like, badum bum or wah wah. I'm like, you've never said anything funny ever, including the badum bump. You stole that. Yeah, the wah wah is hack. Also, even your insults are hack. How do you like that? Yeah, you stink. Larry Bird. How about this? This was one of my big ones. This is like my conceptual bit. I thought this was like I was like I was Carlin on this. This so I was like, wait till they get a load of me. Yeah. I said, uh, I hate that saying, you don't know what you got till it's gone. You know what you got when you got it. That's how you know you got it, because you just got it. That's very Carl. And then I'd say, hey, honey, do we have a blender? Uh, throw it out, and I'll tell you. Mm. But you got a picture. I was 17. I had a fedora. Not a fedora. The uh, derby. I had a derby with and the, pimples. The propeller on it. Wiry glasses. Yeah. I didn't even have glasses then. All right. Well, you lost me on the, le- the second one, but uh, I hear, I, I like where your head's at. I was a teenager. That's sure, pretty good. Sure. It's cute. It's got a good rhythm. It was something. And I did, uh, I mean, I told you the other Carlin one. This is like before stand-up. I opened for my friend's band, Weldon Hill. Great band. Weldon Hill. Yeah, they were good. Nice. They were really good. And so I opened for them, and I said, uh, I did a poem. I did, fuck is a word, often heard, often slurred. I just did a full <laughs> Carlin. <laughs> I was a teenager. It was 23 years ago, for God's sakes. All right, now I had some rough stuff uh, as well. I had a whole joke about uh, the DMV. Well, how come there's no one ever no one attractive at the DMV? That's why when they give you your license, you go, oh, it's an ugly picture. No, that's what you look like. It was my big Seinfeld ending, and uh, boy, one kid, I, it would do well. Then one kid was like, everybody's got an ugly people with the DMV bit, and it crushed me. Because ah, he was right. I didn't know. Well, what can you do? Did you what do the thing about the toothpaste, by the way? With toothpaste? Wife, the wife toothpaste thing. What was that now? Well, I don't know if I can say it. She listens, doesn't she? Huh? Remember you told me a thing, and I was like, that's a bit. That's good. Give me the, the hum a few bars. Well, she wouldn't buy toothpaste, so you hid your toothpaste. Don't you remember? Yeah, yeah. I do that every day. That's the whole thing. That's a bit. That's gold. Oh. That's gold, Jerry. But well, where's the turn? What turn? My wife, I hate my wife. She's a piece of shit. She won't buy toothpaste, so I'm hiding the toothpaste. Uh, she's got three cavities last year, something oh, like that. Oh, that's cavities. Now we got a, yeah, a premise you go, here. You know, my, my wife, but meanwhile, she's spending eight grand at the dentist, and I go, if you spent two bucks on the toothpaste, you wouldn't have to go to the dentist. There you go. Tooth- my teeth have never been whiter, and she's getting a root canal, something like that. Okay, now we're writing. I think that's. I think about it all the time. That's very really? good. Yeah, it's very oh, funny. Oh, wow, okay. Maybe I'll work on that. We still got to bounce bits one day. That's funny. Oh, yeah, we keep forgetting to bounce bits. I'm bouncing bits with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. And, and Tom, Dick, and Harry stink. They got nothing. Yeah. Come over my way. I got, I'll blow you. You know what I have right now? I AIDS, got no herpes. road dates. because they keep. Oh. First of all, they keep canceling Canada. Oh, my God. Oh, Canada. And everyone keeps giving me shit. They go, what are you canceling? I went to Ecuador. I went to South America before the vaccine came out. You got I'm that right. I'm going to Canada. I'm wow. boosted. I'm vaxxed. I'm recovered. I'm happy to go to Canada. They keep canceling. So fuck Canada. I'm sorry. I won't be in Toronto. But Canada culture. So I had Vancouver cancel. I had Toronto cancel. Then I took some time. Then I had to cancel one gig because I had COVID. Mm. And then uh, I took a couple. I'm trying to go every other week because I don't want to give you all crazy. So I haven't been doing the road. So what I have right now, I got. I'm developing a new act. Yes. I got 15 minutes because nice. I keep doing 15. Ah, at the cellar, if, at the stand, at the New York. If you do a half hour every night, you have a half hour like that. You got that right. You do. You have whatever you do. The goldfish theory. Ah, you know that one. 
Yeah, they, they grow to the side. It's not even a theory, right? It's like a real thing. I don't know. I threw a goldfish in a big tub, and it didn't get any bigger. So maybe it's not. There's something there. You threw a goldfish in my mother? I've called my mother a big tub. Ah, big tub. That wasn't bad. <laughs> All right. Harriet Big Tubman. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Underground Railroad. But uh, my point was... I, I think uh, I don't. Th- I think it's a myth because what about um, what about uh, New Yorkers? There's a lot of tall New Yorkers. You'd think growing up in these tiny boxes, they'd all be little. Well, the, that's where it becomes metaphorical when you switch it to the humans. Oh, it, it's literally goldfish. L- goldfish, literal. Humans, figurative. Got it. I believe. Mm-hmm. The goldfish are literal. If you throw them in the ocean, they become. I assume they get eaten Im- immediately yeah. in the ocean. Oh, you can't yeah. put oh, a goldfish. Yeah. They go to. They go to hell. But. <laughs> It's like uh, torture. Right, right. It's like throwing a Jew in the projects. They're gone. <laughs> but. Oh, they're crunching the numbers. And that's a good name for a Jew, Jimmy Goldfish. <laughs> Gold. It's right in there. Jews did not fuck Fish around. Fish is also Jew. That's right. Yeah. They got, uh, their names are like green, money, yep. gold, uh, banker. Berg. You could put money in an iceberg, sure, maybe. Sure, sure. Iceberg lettuce. Berg's not great. Iceberg Slim be a great Jewish rapper. Mm-hmm. All right. But either way. So, yeah, the goldfish thing I don't believe, because if you put a goldfish in a pond, it stays the same size. I think it gets bigger, doesn't it? I don't think it does. No, a goldfish in a bowl stays small, but if it got in a pond, it would get bigger. I'm pretty sure. All right. Well, we should do a little field trip, a Tuesdays field trip. I love that. Do you Set ever eat up. a goldfish? That was like a big thing. No, I'm not against it, but I've never done it. Our hockey, isn't it crazy? How I, I hate to be like old man asshole, but sure. isn't it crazy how much... Times have changed. In my lifetime, in high school, the hockey team was hazed. They had to eat a goldfish. That was part of it. Good old days. I mean, can you imagine right now if you were a coach of a hockey team and you said, hey, you got to oh. shove a goldfish up your ass if you want to play centerman. That goldfish was non-binary. <laughs> you'd be a transphobe and a fishphobe. You'd be ruined. I mean, you'd be, you'd be fired immediately. But uh, And by the way, some of the, the wokeness progression, I'm for. I am against hockey coaches making their kids eat goldfish. No, I'm for it. If I'm, my kid's on the hockey team, I'm going to make them eat a goldfish. All right, well, that's fair. But uh, it's bones. I think it's on healthy it's torture it's uh you know it's a little gay too what, frankly what the uh, the yucky cookie well yucky cookie i would play with any high school kid right now sure yeah we should All bring right. in a couple of high school let's get kids them in here get that yucky yellow, cookie. Like, yellow school bus pulls up <laughs> Woo-wee! and by the way i'd be out as soon as they walked in and took their shirts off forget it i'd be all over the cookie oh yeah yeah you would drown that cookie that's a lot of frosting oh wait no i would win you win if you're first the last one to come eats the cookie is that right? Yeah. Oh. That's a good cookie. That's... Everyone jerks off on a cookie. Last one to come has got to eat it. Oh, that's right. Which would be hard for me in my younger days because I was on Paxil for anxiety and depression. I couldn't come. Oh, you could yeah. shove a whole fist in my ass. I wouldn't come. Bill Paxil. All he right. He was good. He, what, did he die? He died a while ago, yeah. A few years ago. That's a shame. Sweet guy. Good egg. Well, that's the end of the show, folks. <laughs> What we were we talking run. about, though? We started with something. We had Toronto. Cooking. Goldfish. Oh, Canada. Yeah, so I got 15 minutes. Ass. Talking about the new oh, bits. I, yeah. I got 15 minutes, but it's good. It's hot. But uh, I need I need to flex my le- uh, stretch my legs. Yeah, I'm in the, uh, the, the limbo period. The pra, what is that called? Pra, what's that? When you're, you're not in oh, hell. purgatory. Purgatory. Yes. 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 Percocet. I'm in purg and uh, iceberg. And I got all these bits that are like B minus, kind of getting chuckles, but I can't clink them. I can't get that ending in there. So uh, I'm in a shit spot. B minus is nice, by the way, though. I'll take a B minus tit, but I'm saying with the bits, it's like, uh, it's just, it's a lull. You know, you got your A killing, killing, then the B minus cooks in, then you can be backing up with an A. But it's like a good 10, 15 of B minus. Here's what I think about special. What do you think about this? I was reading about uh, the director, Howard Hawks. Mm. He had a theory about movies. You need three great scenes and no bad scenes. Oh, interesting. I think a special's like that. Interesting. You need three great bits and no bad bits. But wait a minute. similar? So the rest are okay? They're good. They're good. They're not They're great. Good. You got you got, you're watching. You're like, this is good. And then you have a scene or a bit yeah. where you're like, whoa, wow. Like, think about it, bring the pain. I think there's more than three, don't you think? Well, what are the great ones? Black people versus N words, sure, big. The sure. OJ's big. Yeah, yeah. Toss salad, man. Toss salad, solid. Very good. Okay, so there you go. I look at it. I like that. I, I, I would in an hour. I think three is is uh, maybe five. Maybe, but three great bits. Sure, sure. And then all good. 
I think of it as a trail mix. Hmm. I hate trail mix. Do you? Yeah, I don't care for trail mix. I like M&M's. Well, here's the thing. They're trans now. But I like trail mix, too, but I like trail, trail mix all of it. I like all of it. So, like, to me, a special should be like trail mix, where I like a cashew, I like a raisin. Whoa, an M&M! Holy shit! Okay. Back to raisin. So that's one. That's what I'm saying. But I'm though. saying you pepper a, bu- a couple M&Ms in there. So you get three M&Ms. I'm saying three M&Ms. You're saying five M&Ms. I'm saying five M's. Okay. So let's look at- um, Also, my bits are shorter, maybe. Well, let's look at- So is your dick. But let's look True. at- um, And thinner. Eddie Murphy, Delirious. Yeah. Three great bits. All good, baby. I mean, what are the great bits? I feel like he's got a cut. He's got the whole Italian guy's dicks. He's got the gays are looking at my asshole. Uh, he's got the- Is it ice cream? Ice cream man, that's a great bit. That's a great bit. I mean, the, to me, the big music, Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross is great. James Brown. Oh Bang. yeah, the Richard Pryor bit. That's is the funny. great one. The Cosby. Yeah, are these uh-huh. great bits? Yeah, yeah, you got, you got something here. Maybe you're right. Oh, it's Howard Hawks, but I, I'm just applying it to the specials. I'm not saying these are these are hard and fast like, rules here, like but it's, hard. Inter- it's an interesting theory. Yeah, all right. I like it. I love a theory. I love discussing. Uh, throw it right in my ass. I'll I'm take not, anything. I'm not saying that's the best special. But that does make for a great special. If you have an hour special with three great bits, yeah, and the rest are all good bits, that's a good special, here, obviously, because there's no bad bits. It is interesting how you can't predict what's going to catch. You know, mm. Houston, we have a problem. That's really not that great of a sentence, but it just grabbed a hold of the cock of America and jerked it. Well, it's a big moment, but also with that, they do make it the big moment. Mm. Like if there wasn't a trailer, if that if they didn't say it and go that was in the trailer and this is the moment, would it be considered as great? Right, right. Although it, was, it is the turning point. They have that quick. All right, how about this one? Run, Forest. Every right. black Negro in my neighborhood was yelling that at me when I took off outside the bodega. Well, you know, I ran cross country track, winter oh, track, track, so it was it. it was constant. Uh, there was everybody, and it, it, it was the earliest. Feeling of like, you hack, you fucking hack. I know, hack. I know, I know. God, just call me a fag or something. Something I could use yeah. and agree with. Give me something. But how about this one? This was big in college. I, hey, uh, uh, I think we need more ice. I think we need more cowbell. All right, we oh, got the cowbell, cowbell thing. You saw SNL. You like walking. You like feral. We got it. What about this? People still do that. Well, I see a comic do this, and I, I might offend somebody. And oh, just, bring it on. Just uh, my apology. No apology. Gut milk. Uh, gut jizz. <laughs> People are still referencing gut milk. I swear to God. They really are. I saw a gut. They really gut, are. Gut poo. The other, I'm like, what? Gut poo. Oh, uh, whatever man. it was. I can't remember. But uh, gut milk was everywhere. Yeah, I'm on I'm on almond and oak at this point. Yeah, just gut milk. No, I got suicidal when you said that. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> I got uh. AIDS. Holy hell, gut milk. Yeah, that was everywhere. But that, it's on the flip side, to be that. What do you call that? Copywriter, Iconic? marketer. Oh, oh, I see. To be that guy or gal and be like, I'm the gut milk guy. I mean, right. you changed the world. Everyone said it. It changed marketing. It changed billboards. That was you. By the way, speaking of great bits, that was like one of my earliest favorite Gullman bits. He goes, I saw six ads for milk today. Why is there oh, one ad for milk? That's a great bit. Who are they targeting? People unaware of milk? Yes. He goes, hey, he's eating his cereal dry. He's like, I wish there was some kind of liquid I could pour into this. Yes. It's very dry. I tried Dr. Pepper, but it was a bit too effervescent. Effervescent. Yes. How many people good. have that word in their act? Yes. Just Goldman. Boy, he's good. That's a great bit. Classic. I got, I got, I got you ever have this kind of like the dry sock after a wet sock? Mm-hmm. You know when you get wet nose into dry nose and it dries? I got a bunch of dry snugs going. And it's crusty. It's like Yeah, a, I got a crusty rim right it's now. It's an old cavern in there with some stalactites, which I love. I love getting that out there and, and, and just throwing it all over people's apartments. Oh, my bad. We vacuum. I mean, it sounds like a, a, a guy falling down a mountainside. I right. vacuum. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <help. laughs> it sounds like a German guy j- jizzing. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's just crunch city. Because I, I, all I do all night, like it, subconsciously in my dream, I'm just picking and dropping oh, back behind same. the bed. Yeah. Oh, dude, don't get me, I'm a nail biter. I mean, so behind my couch is just a graveyard of anal. I mean, it's just twigs and tweaks of, of nail. Well, sometimes I wake up. I wake up before Sarah by a couple of days, and she'll like start to open her eyes, and I, I look at the pillow. It's like a movie. I have to dive and do a swipe because it's just. What is it? It's no, just braille. No, it's just dry bugs, bloody oh. bugs. 
Oh. And they've just been sitting there, and I'm like, don't open your eyes. I got to yeah. swipe it because I'll be divorced. I mean, it's it's booger central on uh, that pillow. I feel the same way about the Dan Druff. Oh, I'm <laughs> eating over here. It's no joke. I, I'll le- I'll lean my on the uh, on the couch arm, which is a brown leather couch, and I'm doing you know a few of these every now and then, uh-huh. a little of that, a little head scratcher. I'm thinking about philosophy and trans, and then I get up and it's just a snow globe <laughs> on the arm, and I see the lady coming by, and I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the big bad wolf over there on that arm. Yeah, you gotta snort it. I mean, it, it's bad news bears, and it's just disgusting, and uh, I don't know. And every once in a while, I'll catch her in a pick, and I, I'm like, oh my god, I gotta eat this woman's pussy at some point on her birthday if maybe sure yeah send me the tape but my gal uh, i caught her uh picking at the old labia the other night and i really uh nailed her to the wall oh come on <laughs> i mean it was nothing you know it was like an underwear movement or ah. a, a, a gray pube she pulled but uh i was on it i was like whoop i caught it and she was like no <laughs> don't tell anybody especially into a microphone uh, toothpaste yes um. good bit <laughs> Needs a turn. It's good. <laughs> it's got a turn. <laughs> Cavities. Turn, Cavity turn, 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 turn around. Season. Bright eyes. Oh, this is fun. All this right. is a good time. We're really Too here. Fun. We're having a podcast. Oh, are you going to give us the half clock horse shit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. We cool. forgot about the half clock. Shelby invented the half clock, and then he never gave it to us. That's right. I think he That's forgot. Right. Yeah. But I like the half clock. All right. I, half clock. Now, see, you uh, you said something there. It felt like a curb app. Hmm. Uh, maybe it was before the, the mics heated up. Which oh, is weird to say because they don't heat, by the way. But no. we get it. By the way, I, there's so many. We've seen more people than we've ever seen. I was in the elevator with a guy with a cane. Ooh. He's in the, he's in the building. A cane guy. Wow. No Monopoly. mask and a cane. No mask and a cane. Quite bold. Yeah, interesting and, lifestyle. And then when I got here, I couldn't believe you guys here, got here before me because I went and got some burritos for the gang. I Thank to you. Invite Chuck, sorry. He's, he's on a diet. You know what it is? I didn't want to have to order three. I thought of you. I did think of you. Yeah, that's all right. I was like, three burritos. Well, <laughs> Chuck eats like a Filipino beach boy. You know, you <laughs> eat like berries and nuts and uh, shrimp. Yeah. I got a little bag of grapes I take around, get bananas in the car. Yeah, I like that. See? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. A real fruit eater. But I, I came down the hallway and there was an old gentleman standing here talking to you guys. It was, it was frightening. I almost left. I thought he was kicking us out. I thought he was the repo man. And these offices, by the way, we have like a closet. The other offices are huge. huge. There's like leather desks and wood chairs. Yeah, there's a bust of Jefferson. And then he looked in here and it's just you know, lights and cameras. And I go, we're shooting a porn. He went, <laughs> there was a bust. I saw a bust. <laughs> we should get some busts. We're going to get busted. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe we got a bust of Shelby right here just to keep us in line. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so I got a bit of a canun. Oh, I got to throw right on your back and see if it's warm. Oh, I can't wait. I uh, really want to come on my back. Now, this is a, I got a lot to un- unpack here, as they say. Oh, God. I say unfold. I'm going unfold. I Although, unfold's good. Okay. But the thing is, unfold, I think it's easier. You just pick it up and then it unfolds it's unfold. itself. Yeah, good point. But unpack, you just dump out. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm dumping. All right. So... We're looking for apartments, as you know. We're going all over Brooklyn, all over town. You know, got my realtor guy. I've had this guy. And he's one of these guys. He's sweet as a pie. He's nice as hell. But you're like, what are you getting out of this? Are you just hoping? Because he's we've been a year at this this apartment hunt. Well, I think he gets the big check, doesn't he? The big check at the end? I think so, right? Is that worth it? I mean, this is a year. Well, basically, like, when I just got my apartment in Staten Island, I had to pay one full month of rent to the person who helped me find the is apartment. That right? Yeah, one full month. So I got I had to pay first month security and then one month to the finder. Whoa. Yikes. Yeah. But we are gonna buy it. So I don't know how that's gonna work. Ooh. You don't give them a month of mortgage. You give them a mortgage that's payments? a lot of clams. They probably have a percentage of the closing or something. Uh it's probably true. But I mean, after a year, I feel like I'd be like, these people are wishy-washy, they're lesbians, fuck them. But, but he's, he's hanging in. But he's probably gotten a few other people, right? He might have a couple he's other. Probably got uh, a bunch of people. Okay, okay. That, that all the places he's showing to you, he's showing to like ten other couples. Jeez, so he hopes that little... all of them eventually buy one, right? Ouch! Yeah. Damn, I'm getting two timed here. Yeah, I think it's like a manager. I think it's like ten percent or something. Okay, the realtor. So... Realtor's making cash. All right. Well, he's well dressed. He's quaffed. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like a uh, McDonald's or something. Sure, sure. All right. So here's the clinker. This guy's all over. We're actually getting friendly because you spend hours with this guy all day long. You end up getting a cup of coffee. Oh, the next house isn't ready. Let's go get a cup of turtle soup. You're like, all right, fuck it. Now his hand's on my knee. I never want to be friendly. Yeah, so, but whatever. I, I invited him to the wedding. I panicked. <laughs> 
<laughs> so he's coming to the wedding. He's he's officiating. What's the numbers for the wedding, by the way? 200, what? 300, 100? Oh, about, what about 180? Woo! But that's going to get lowered down. Even Chuck's coming. I'm coming. Yeah, you're coming? <laughs> I'm coming. Chuck's <laughs> in. <laughs> I'm going to be like, hey, Chuck, while you're here, you might as well pick up a camera. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, yeah, how Patreon. many people work for you that are going to be here? I know. Salicuse is going. My other guy's going. But oh, yeah, my God. You guys are going to be bumping lenses. Oh, jeez whiz. Jeez whiz. So, are we doing a pod at that thing or what? <laughs> we should. We yeah. should do a live. Yeah, the lady's like, can I get in? Like, no, no, we got a rhythm. <laughs> we know you don't doing. understand. We watched a lot of the TV show. <laughs> That's a lot of rapport. Ah. <laughs> Oh, I'm stressed. All right, so um creaking and cracking. So <laughs> tippy toe, tippy toe. So we're we're we're, ha- we're hanging out with this guy, the realtor guy. I'm not going to say his name, but uh I saw on Street Easy. That's the hot website with all the sites. Oh, I know about Street Easy. So I that's saw like Zillow, right? Yes. Uh-huh. But great name for a prostitute site. Zillow? Street Easy. Ah, uh-huh. but so uh, I saw another apartment. I sent it to my guy, and he was like, oh, this place looks great. This could be a winner. Here we go. And that's the thing. It's, it's a lot of hope. Everything. This might be the one. Ah, right. You know? And it's like Tinder, except you get to go inside on the first try. But either way, we see a guy. We see an apartment, or I do, and I send it to him. He's like, ah, I'm busy this week. I'm in Montauk or whatever. I'm, I'm at Epstein's Island. I go, all right. So I message the guy who, who's showing it, uh-huh. and he goes, uh, oh, I can show you this tomorrow. And I was like, oh, is that unethical? Mm. I got my guy, and now I'm going to see it with this guy. But he, hey, my guy can't make it. What, I'm, I'm going to miss out on a great apartment? But is the other guy a realtor also, or he yes. just owns the place? Oh, you go, you're going to a different realtor. So he's two-time, you're two-time. Exactly. So I go, here, here's my lady's number. I can't go. I got 18 pods, uh, whatever. Chuck's in the hospital. So he's, so he's texting her now, and now it's getting weird. Because I'm like, who is this guy? And well, me and my lady went out to dinner. We're having a couple cocktails. We're eating shrimpy. We're eating. We're eating pussy. And and she's like, oh, there's that guy again. And then she's like giggling. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Well, you guys are like getting canoodly here. And uh, she's like, oh, he's just a funny guy. I'm like, oh, funny, no, guy. funny guy. That's yeah. the kiss of the anal. Yeah, like, that's all you guy. got. That's all I got. I got no dick. I got no uh, no job. So. I'm like, ah, okay. And then I you know, I let it go. I'm like, ah, you're being crazy. And then throughout the meal, I mean, it's 10 o'clock at night here. We, we got, we're at this nice restaurant, and uh, I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm going tomorrow. I cancel everything I'm doing. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm doing, like, you know, Rogan. I'm doing Marin. I'm doing Good Morning America. I cancel all of it <laughs> to go meet this guy. That guy's a queef, though. He's probably a little guy with glasses wow. and a shaved head. Are you- you know the bald, but she, he's charming as shit. I read through the thread. He's like cool as hell. He's slick. you read the thread. I read a little thread. She went to take a shit at one point. And I got in there. She was picking her vagina. She Never read the it. thread. Yeah, bad thread read. So I'm pissed. So I and the guy goes, all right. I give my number. I go, hey, you're dealing with me now, Chachi. All right, Drop forget about the uh, old labia there. So now he's uh, hitting me up, and you know now he's swooning me, and I'm fall. I want to blow him. Interesting. He's good. Now, is she jealous of you? No, she was never into him. Because it'd be funny if she's like, wait, what are you giggling? Yeah, <laughs> this guy's funny. <laughs> That's true. So now I'm driving the bus, and the guy's like, well, you want to meet up? And I was like, yeah, but I'm only available at like 6 p.m. And then I got to go out and do a show after. He's like, all right, whatever. So this, now it's the sun setting. I meet this guy out in Brooklyn. It's beautiful neighborhood, brownstones, sunset. This guy is smoking hot. Oh, I mean, God. he looks like McConaughey. He's got a trench coat on. His hair slicked back. He's wearing a Rolex. He's got black pointy shoes and, and like a V-neck sweater. I mean, it's a little little chest hair poking out. This guy's fucking gorgeous. Pointy shoes, something like that. Well, the kids wear them. I don't know. He, like like black shoes. Like, um, but not pointy. That's like a lady shoe. Maybe not pointy, but they're they're. Like Italian Buffed, leather, I see. yes, yes. Like yes. a flat nose, yeah, a little like the flat kind of nose, flat nose, yes, like okay. a like a like a porpoise, uh, yes. So uh, I'm like, oh, I'm like swooning, and you know, he grabs my hand, he twirls me, he dips me. The sun is going down. The whole thing was magical. I go in this apartment, I didn't even notice anything because he's just like, oh, this is crown molding from the 1800. This is a uh, an archway, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm all wet and hot and bothered. Turns out, somehow, we start talking about comedy. 
Huge comedy, and he knows stuff. He's not just mm. like, oh, I like uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. He's a kook. You know, he's like, oh, this guy, uh, Eddie Murphy's second special, what isn't as good, and then rock and all this shit. I'm like, wow, this guy knows his stuff. Then we're talking to the guy showing the place. Somehow, we end up in the basement floor of the apartment. He's just showing. It's, oh, boy. It's dark. There's no light coming in. He's got like a, you know, and the clink clink. Oh, I love the, those clink clink. The hanging bulb. Yeah, where the, uh, you know, the iron falls from. Right, right. So we're in the basement of this old brownstone, and somehow it comes up, and the the showing guy, the guy showing it, just some old white guys, like ah, I don't know, man, I can't stand this woke shit. And now we got three guys masked down to here. In the basement of a brownstone in Brooklyn, in the dark, just trashing, just cancel culture. Wow. And all. It got weird. And I'm like, what am I doing here? I, I got to get out of here. So the guy's like, well, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going back to the village. I got I got a gig. And he goes, I'll go with you. And I'm like, ah. Oh, which guy? The hot guy. The realtor hot guy. Okay. The other guy's got to stay and show the apartment to other people. I see. So, so why, why is there two showers? That's what I don't get. So the one guy, the realtor goes from place to place, but each place has another guy? Each place has a guy stationed there. Uh, the station guy. Yes, and if you have any other questions, he can answer them, and he lets you in and all that. The other guy knows all about the place. Ah. He's like the salesman. So he's doing all the, the talking and the schmoozing, and the other guy's just there kind of letting you in. It seems like all rackets. Doesn't it feel like a racket? It's all a racket, and these guys are making out like banditos. Mm -hmm. So... I'm in love with this guy now. We ride the train together. At some point, I was sitting on his lap. I mean, we're going from Man Brooklyn to Manhattan. It's a ride. It's a half-hour ride. It certainly is. So now I'm, like, swooning over this guy. Now I feel really bad about my other guy. Yeah. Now, what's the other guy? Give us some taste of the other guy. Is he hot? Is he no, charming? Is he sweet? No. He's a big dweeb. He's a nerd. He's older. He's got two kids. He sounds nice. He's nice. He's definitely nice, but he ain't uh, Slick Rick over here. Right. Boy, this is a tricky one. This is tricky. So, now here's where it gets really interesting. Oh, boy. So, the next day, me and me and the lady are joking. I'm like, he's so hot. I'm so glad I cock-blocked you. He was going to fuck you in the ass on, on Broadway. And, boop, text comes up from the original realtor. Uh, and he goes, uh, I found this amazing place. You got to see it. It's the original place. Or the place that the, the hot guy oh, showed me. So boy, I go, this is making my stomach hurt. I go, we're busted. We're, we're in cahoots. He knows we're two-timing. Oh, we're so now you got to call the guy that lives at the house and be like, pretend you don't know us? Well, here's the thing. So I go, hey, hey, lady parts, you got to go. Ah, that's not bad. I, I can't go. So I'm like, oh, I got a dentist appointment or an OBGYN. I can't make it. And he's like, what? You got to see it. This place is great. I'm like, ah, I'm enough with houses. I hate houses. I hate apartments. And so she goes, and I told everything about it. I already described everything to her. So now she has to go there and... Oh, look at this. Oh, uh, how about that? You know, and she's like trying to be blown away. Right. And uh, that's that's where we're at. But uh, I mean, the whole thing is a curb app. We've just been howling, laughing at the apartment with this thing. So does he. So where are you? I, I got so many questions. Please, here. please. So is the other guy, the original guy, are you thinking about firing him? And what happens if you want to buy this place? Because the other guy, the hot exactly. guy is going to be like, you owe me commission. And then the dweeb guy is going to be like, well, you owe me commission. You guys might each pay a commission. Well, the whole thing, the place is beautiful. Beautiful, the place is great, but it's out. We can't buy it because of this situation. Oh, my God. I know, I know. So we're going back with the original dweeby guy. We feel bad, but this guy still blowed me up. He texted me today. Oh, He's my He's like, God. hey, sweetheart, what are you wearing? I'm like, easy, buddy. Uh, I already got a guy. You got to get him in at the wedding. Let him come to the wedding. Uh, Maybe he gives a speech or he's the DJ or something. Uh, that's not bad. If he does, he's going to fight it out with the dweeb. Give him something important. All right. That's what I think. But I know when I went to do Letterman, I bought some uh, shoes, and I had never mm. bought shoes. Yeah, you know the story. Gary Gullman and Ryan Hamilton sure. took me out to buy shoes. By the way, Ryan Hamilton hit by a bus. I know. I texted with him the other day. He's okay. Yeah. Two yeah. ribs broken. Six. Six. Six ribs broken, collapsed lung, and he said he's got a titanium rod in his arm. That's healing well. He hopes wow. the other shit heals well. Damn. Yeah, I felt bad too because he's like, we don't, we, you know, we realize how lucky we have it. We're so happy. I've been like in a depressive funk. Yeah, he's right. He got run over by a bus. He's like, you don't know how good you have it. I'm like, well, I was thinking about killing myself, but <laughs> I, got, I got hit by a bus so I can get some perseverance. Not that. What's that called? Uh, perspective. Perspective. Yes. Purgatory. I felt the same way after my spine thing this last week. Oh, your spine thing. I was, I was so lucky. Yeah. You're, you're comparing a slip disc to a hit by a bus. Hey. Get out of here with that disc. Right. A disc can be serious. It Com can be. Compact disc. Uh, I don't see Ryan Hamilton in the booth. Floppy disc. Um, 
What was I going to say? Oh, but he took me to buy shoes, and you know, I care about nice, clean shoes, as you can see. Sure. By the way, I played tennis on clay. Look at these things. They're ruined. Yeah, They're out yeah. of the box. They're dusty as Look hell. At it looks like a dog shit on them. Yeah, it's not good. Shit dog. Oh, jeez. Anyways, so I remember when I went to, we went to, uh, like, Alan Edmonds, and the guy was showing me the shoes, and I had never bought anything wow, before. Wow, Alan Edmonds. That's a place I've walked by. I've never gone in. Who goes in there? It's fancy. What's the other place? There's Ethan Allen is furniture. Alan Edmonds is shoes. Ah. They're, like, across the street from each other. Sure. That but so those, Allen. those, oh, we got the half cock. Hey, All half right. cock. Nice. I really like the idea of the Shelby bust. Kind of fun. Oh, you're the one. Maybe a hole in the mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> hole in the mouth. So it's gonna be all lip. But we went They're there. They're gonna run out of plaster. We went there and they were, they were showing me the shoes and I tried on the shoes and I don't know what I'm doing. I just kept looking up at my two dads, going, "Do, do I buy, do I buy these? Sure. Do you tie them? What what is this?" And um, after like a 45 minutes, an hour, we were like, "Ah, we're all set." Mm. And the guy was like. Oh, I can't do that. He was pissed. I said to Hamilton, I'm like, we got to buy some shoes here. And Ryan's like, that's his job, and you don't have to buy the shoes. You don't have to. He's like, ah. he sh- his job is to show you the shoes. We're not happy with the shoes. You don't buy shoes. You don't want because Ryan's a fashion guy. Right. And I was like, are you kidding me? He's like, he's licking the glass. He, he's crying. Yeah. He called his dad, but he's like, it doesn't matter. And literally, we were like walking up. You know, Third uh, Avenue. I'm like looking back, and I can see him in the window ah, like this. See the fog <laughs> like, up and go away. Fog up and go away. I, I can't do it. And by the way, the worst part was I bought the. Su- I spent a thousand dollars on a suit. The, the set's on my uh, YouTube now. Go check it out. Killer subscribe. set. Murders. Yeah. Thanks, but I spent all my money on the suit. Literally a hundred percent of my money. Uh, and I was yeah. like, I got eighty bucks left for shoes. And Ryan and Gary, it's like they were sweet to take me out and buy shoes, but they were also like, you can't wear eighty dollars shoes with a thousand dollars suit. I disagree, but uh, yeah. Well, we went out and they bought me a you know a nine hundred dollar pair of shoes that I wore the one time. Oh wow, you still have them though, huh? Oh, I still got them. Yeah, they're up my ass right now. But <laughs> maybe at the wedding you wear them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I've gotten a couple of shoes since uh-huh. then. And other things. So now I got three pairs of shoes that I want to wear once every six months. Plus, I got the plantar fasciitis. So. This is why I can't go into these uh, these Alan Aldas or whatever that store is called because it's uh, you're ruined. That's, I had to stop going to garage sales because you you walk up and some guy's foaming at the mouth. He's jerking off. He's got a half chub. He's like a customer. Oh my god! He's got two saw horses with a plywood and a bunch of knickknacks. And you go, oh, use tampon, uh, a miscarriage in a jar. I gotta get out of here. And they go, oh. Fuck. I know. I mean, uh, two quick stories. Uh, bu- don't get me started on bookstores. I got a oh. pile of books. I got books, Jerry. Like just books. First print, original print, yeah. you know, uh, pressing print, whatever the fuck. Miss print. Cursive print, wh- whatever it is. I-, I go there and it's just exactly, and it's Louis did the great bit about it. You open the door and it's like clang, clang. <laughs> and you show it and it's just eye contact and they're talking and they stand right next to you. Like, what do you like to read? Uh, uh, po- so I got poetry books. I got books that's just leaves. I- 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 <laughs> I wish I had left it. <laughs> Loose leaf. Um, but is that, what was the other story I, that just you spurred on oh, there? Oh, sorry, Alan Alda. Buying uh, things. Uh, Aaron Sorkin. Uh, Alan. The commission. Alan DeGeneres. Wait, the shoes. Double commission on the. Letterman. Buy, buying the shoes. The apartment. And then the bookstore. It was something else. Garage about sales. Oh, one time I went. Remember there used to be that big Lebowski store on like Thompson Street? No. You don't a remember store that? for Lebowski? Yeah. What? It was on Thompson. The whole store? It was a store just Lebowski. It was playing on like DVD all day. Oh, <laughs> that's Chipotle. That had like for a you, speed folks. bump in it. Yeah. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a corn piece of corn there. It was like a fart fell down a well. Um, <laughs> it was like <laughs> poetic. What was it Walt Whitman over here? <laughs> Jesus. I'm uh, from Whitman. Uh huh. Um, but. Fuck me, I can't. Oh, Big Lebowski store. Ah. There was a Big Lebowski score, and I went in there, and, and they sell, you know, robes, and they sell the DVD, and it's the T-shirt, what? and it's like a bowling ball. I yeah, it was there. This. It was there for a couple of years, and I went in, I looked around, and I was like, I love the movie, and he goes, you buying something? Ooh. And I was like, nah, not today. I don't have any money, and he was like, well, it's not a museum. And I was like, what are you doing? You're bullying me into buying yeah, something? I'm that's like, what they do. So you expect everyone that comes into a Big Lebowski store <laughs> to buy something? 
Yeah, the, it's a very niche market you have here. <laughs> yeah, right. This throw rug would really uh, bring the room together. I, I don't have that much. I don't have a big uh, what do you, uh, funds for big yeah. Lebowski shit. Yeah, what a psycho. That, that's a little aggressive, but it uh, was aggressive. That's why they're closed. I mean, that just shows how far New York has come. I bet there's a Pinkberry or a fucking Rite Aid right there because you can't have a big Lebowski store in the village anymore. Big Lebowski store, and then I, I was so annoyed. I went to the Barton Fink store, and um, <laughs> uh, I don't have anything else lined up. Yeah, the just, Miller's Crossing Mall is very nice. It was quite a guy. Uh, yeah, like there's a Miller's Crossing guard. Hello, folks. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's Miller's Crossing time. time. All right. But yeah, wow, Big Lebowski store. I mean, even the fucking, uh, what's that record shop? Bleecker Street. <laughs> Bleecker Street Bob? Bleecker Street Records is gone. That was like a famous spot. Miss Kim's. Was it Kim's video? Oh, Kim's in the East Village. I loved gone. it. Gone. I they, love All that. these cool ass stores. And they hung on, too. They tried buying a new littler store out of the off the beaten path, and they're all gone. They get fucking extinct. Well, the thing that sucked uh, about uh, Bleecker Bob there, that place closed right before, like the day before, the record explosion. Records ah. have never been higher. Now they sell them at Urban Outfitters. That's how people get their music again. Vinyl's back. And he closed right before it happened. He, he must be just kicking himself in the asshole. I know. Records are fun. I mean, they're, they're a cunt. You, 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 you're a mouse queefs, and they go, they scratch. But mm -hmm. there's something fun about that. Right when you put the needle on, and then it catches, and the yeah. music starts playing. It's a. I went to Ari's place the other day. He's got a, the Who on the record player, and he's doing that shit with the coffee where it's in a beaker, and he's swirling, and I'm like, who are you? Ah, he, uh, he's a strange guy. I know. He won't admit that he hates that neighborhood, but I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. <laughs> he's got an apartment. It's tight. It's tight, and it's like this. I know. I've been there. I've been there. It's, but I, I, think he, I think he hates the neighborhood. I think he's full of shit, but he, I can't get him to say it. Yeah, yeah. I think truth serum, that kill Bill, if I, he'd be like this, it's terrible, I hate all the homeless. You know truth what I mean? serum would be, I would love, my, my uh, goal in life is to hit a woman with truth serum, tie her up, and just ask her questions about men. Oh, I'd be so scared that she'd be like, Ugh! your dick is tiny, it's awful, uh, I hate the herpes. You know yeah, what I mean? You know your dick's your tiny, stinks. you don't need her. I'm talking about, like, what is it? You like when guys do this, don't you? You kind of like mansplaining a little bit, I bet. Come on, talk to me. Right. Yeah, it's hard to know. You want to just crack into those diaries and oh. the, the phone call. They want to tap a phone oh, call. I love a phone tap. I love to tap and just be like, uh-huh. But I just picture I'd be crying, you know what I mean? She's sure. like, his asshole's dirty, you know? He doesn't eat me out the way I want. I yeah. wish he was Spanish. Uh, I've heard the lady and her her gal pals, they, they have a pillow fight and panties and, and grapes and stuff, and... Ooh, it's mean. Just the things they say about their boy. I had this guy the other night. He tried to eat me out. It was fucking embarrassing. I, I couldn't wait for him to come back up. I was like, oh, God. I just pictured them talking about you. Oh, God. But hey, look, we do it too. We go, hey, she she nibbled on my sack. I was laughing the whole time. I didn't even feel it. Well, I did have a woman who had the teeth involved in the blowjob. Yeah. I, I wanted to go, hey, give me the number of the person that told you this was a good idea. I want to have a chat with them. Right. Or uh, the lady with ice in her mouth. Let me put some ice in. Like, no, nah, no, nah, the BJ was working. Ice? You never heard the ice? No. Ice, baby? <laughs> I don't want any ice. Oh, well, don't go to the border. Well, I want no, no pain, no nothing, no temperature. I just want to be spit in my mouth. You know, that's all I want. Sure, sure. I want just a nice drooly spit in the mouth or the face like a real yeah you know Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Lucy. Lucy is a modern oral nicotine company that makes nicotine gum, lozenges, and pouches for adults who are looking for the best, most responsible way to consume their nicotine. We're all adults, and some of us choose to use nicotine to relax, focus, or just unwind after a long day. So when you feel a craving, call up your girl, Lucy. Get her involved. Hey, I love nicotine. I love a cigar. Do you know cigars have like 200 milligrams of nicotine? Ooh, and a cigarette has like that. six. Yeah, it's always fun. It's a buzz. I love it. I love nicotine, but uh, quitting smoking is very difficult, so a better better option is this Lucy Nicotine Gum. Get yourself some gum. This stuff is great. They sent us some. We chewed it. We love it. I've given it to some people that wanted to uh, quit smoking, and they loved it. It's a new year. Why not start out by switching to a new nicotine product that you can feel good about? You know about it, Marcus. Tell them how to get it, would you? Love the loose. If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. That's lucy.co and use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Also, I have to read this disclaimer. You know the legal mumbo jumbo. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical, but you knew that. Remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co. And be sure to use that promo code Tuesdays. Thank you. 
Folks, Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Blue Chew. You know about Blue Chew. They've been a sponsor for a long time. They've always been good to us in more ways than one. Hey, dummy, this year isn't about you just sitting around. It's time to get off the couch and get back into the bedroom, and Blue Chew can help. We're all getting a little older. We've been doing this show for almost 10 years, so I assume some of you in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, and you probably got boner problems. I don't because I'm a man but uh Damn. if you got boner problems you know what i mean don't go for that bullshit whatever you've heard of the store you heard this you heard that get the good stuff the best stuff blue chew blue chew's tablet offers the same ingredients as viagra and cialis but it's in a chewable form if you don't like swallowing pills i don't this is for you since blue chew is an online prescription service that's no doctor's office or waiting in line i hate lines won't do it won't stand in line for anything talk to a licensed medical provider and get a prescription all online. It works fast. You can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. Boner City, you run for mayor. Tell them how, Marcus. You got that right. Put your boner in my mouth. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew app can help. Blue Chew can help. Where'd I put app? Sorry. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Just pay the five smack roonies in shipping. What a steal. That's BlueChew.com, promo code TUESDAYS, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this pod. Get hard. It's easy. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by our all-time favorite sheath underwear. You know we love our boy Robert Patton. He's got them on. I got them on. Look at this. I got thermal, so it's hard to get to them. There they hey. are. Look at that. You got red. I got yellow. We love old Bobby Patton. This guy's nice the fellow. best. Huge Tuesday. Spent some time with him at Skankfest. By the way, Skankfest Vegas. Get your tickets to that. You Ooh. may or may not see us. But oh, I wouldn't yeah. advertise it if we weren't going to be there. Sheath underwear is the underwear for comedy fans. All the comedy fans love it. If you're a regular listener to this show, your balls and dicks aren't in two separate components right now. What the F are you doing? For God's sakes, I wear this underwear every single day. Mark does too. We're not just saying that. I love this underwear. You know how I feel. I love pulling my dick out of that little pocket. Yes. It's just delightful. And it really does keep your balls and dick separate, which they want to be together. But they're separate. U.S. Army oh, yeah. soldier and Tuesday Robert Patton knew there would had to be a better way to unstuck. Sorry, Bobby. Better way to unstuck the junk, and that's how Sheath was born. Magical dick pouch aside, this underwear is comfy, cool, and comes in many different patterns. You can have a pair of Sheath ready for any occasion. I tell you, the women they love it. They think it's sexy. They make underwear and bras for the ladies too. Mm -hmm. They didn't leave out the ladies. The comfort you guys know for your balls, Sheath has applied it to titties with their sports bras. Yeehaw! You got to get some, Marcus. You know how to do it. Tell them how. Oh yeah, I'm a fan. I love them. I wear them. I sniff them. Sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code Tuesdays to get 20% off your first order and Sheath 100% money back guarantee. That's Sheathunderwear.com. Promo Promo code Tuesdays. Get sheath underwear and let them support your balls. Get on it, folks, and thank us later. <laughs> well, I got to tell you about this. Just got back from California. IA. Mm -hmm. You did? Oh, Sacramento. What? All we do is the hey, the United flight went 9 11. I sat next to a fat guy. The Uber shit in my mouth. All bad. This was, this is all positive. Okay. Like COVID. So, cross country, though, is a cunt. Yeah, it stinks. Because in Sacramento, it's a weird area because you got to connect. You <sighs> got to connect, Johnson. I'm not good at connecting. Hey, to connect. But we added some shows. We did seven sold out shows. That is a great room. I love that room. That was our first gig. That's right. Back in the day. I was getting misty. I hosted, what was that, 09, uh, 2010? It was 2009. It was right when I went to Peru. It was the weekend before I went to Peru. That's right. To see my ex. I was heading to Peru. It was an emotional time in my life. I'm glad I caught you before that trip. Oh, my God. 
But yeah, it was me hosting, you featuring, and Joe DeRosa headlining. Yeah. And uh, I remember we like took home a couple waitresses. We got drunk every night. We, me and you would get drunk at the pool at noon. We made him go. T- that was when Bjorn left us, our manager. That's right. He quit, and uh, we were in the pool. And then DeRosa came over. He's like, What are you guys going to do? And I was like, I'm so bad with career. I still am. I was like, What do you mean do? Right. I'm like, This is great. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, At some point, we all have to move to LA. Remember he said that? He's yes. like, At some point, we all got to go to LA. And I'm like, LA? LA. Are you crazy? Yeah, and it's amazing how much has changed and how much I didn't know. I was so green. I moved to New York in 08, so right. this, I'm still nobody. I'm, a, I'm an open micer. I'm worthless. I'm gay. And you were like, uh, remember you you gave me shit. You're like, you tell them about your day job up there. Don't let them think you have a job. job. And I was like, really? That bad? I thought, that was, I thought I was supposed to be honest up there. You're like, no, lie to them. What about when we looked for the strip club for like a, four months? We were like Moses out there. Remember uh, that? Yeah. I had my pants on my head like, like fucking Clark Griswold. Because we drove by hot. a titty bar, and I was obsessed with titty bars back then. Yeah, you were. And I was like, let's go. We walked like up and down the highway. I'm like, I swear to God, it's here. It was like show night. Yes. We had two shows. It was like 5 p.m. We're sweating, looking for a titty bar. And I had no money. Right. Right, right. I remember that. I remember. I also remember a vague recollection of me just waiting in the pool, and you were swimming on the other side. I go, "You got to see this Mulaney guy." You're like, "I don't know much about him." <laughs> I was like, "Wow, he did not, to not know about Mulaney. That's how how different time this was." Either way, great weekend uh, in Sacramento. Got the hotel. You know when you start selling out, they're nice to you. They oh, bumped yeah. up my hotel. You should stay in that residence inn. Now yes. you're in the Hilton, and uh, just I had Joey Avery and this guy Daoud. Daoud. Yeah. I don't know Daoud. I love Avery, though. He's a hot son of an onion. He's a sexy little twink, isn't he? Oh, my God. But we just had the greatest weekend. Those guys were cool as shit. We worked on jokes. We got drunk. We, we, the crowds were great. The, these guys are younger. They're like 28, 30, 31. So they're all in on the cams, the content, cams. the uh. clips, the captions, uh. the graphics, you name it. I mean, every show, it was like a fucking gay porn shoot. We had the whole back was aligned with cameras. We all got, cl- I, got a, I got a clip out of the gate. You know, we played ping pong all day. Just one of those magic weekends. Everything was perfect until the last show. Ah, uh, the last show. Last this, picture show. This is how magical the weekend was. We got drunk with the staff. It, it feels like, like a, it's like a 2008 museum over there. Like everything is just kind of laid back. You can still afford a home. You can be a waiter and have a house. You know, it's clean, wow. it's safe. It's just a different world out there. I look at the news, it's a blizzard in New York. Everybody's like, don't come back, don't go back. And I got my feet up by the pool. Right, yeah, it's nice, good living. It's good living. The Sack town. I mean, Bay don't, go to, back down. don't go to L.A. or San Francisco, but right now, Sack and uh, all that shit is fun. Or New York don't come to. Sure. There's maniacs everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's off the path enough where you're like, this is nice. You could get a, a car here and just live. Yeah. But either way, so all the shows are great, killer shows, and then uh, Andrew Schultz is in town for some giant Ah, arena show on Saturday. So Avery, being the the little cunning kook that he is, he goes, hey, how do you feel about this? I'm going to go do his show, do a guest set on his show, (laughs) come back and feature. I was like, go for it. So he goes, and uh, I like I like the gumption. He goes out there, does Schultz's show. It's like twenty five hundred people at some fucking amphitheater, and there's lights and, and, and a macaw. You know, it's a whole thing. There's blue angels fly over, and pretty good. Yeah. Also sounded like my toilet <laughs> when I flush, but uh, yeah. So he comes back. We do the show, and then the lat we six shows killer. We did meet and greets. We did photos. We did the whole thing. Six shows. Seventh show. We're a little wiped. I'm hungover. Third show of the night. And man, that crowd just sucked ass. Mm. And you get spoiled. You know, these these are twos gays coming out. These are comedy fans. And that last one was just like, you know, 20 minutes in, I just I gave in and I was like, you guys suck. Oh, boy. You know that feeling? Yeah, it's not a great feeling. It sucks. You want to leave. I, I talk about it all the time because it's like they're not enjoying it. You're not enjoying it. So you're like, why don't we just call it? I know. Just call it a day. We'll, we'll try another time. And then they kept doing this thing where I was like, man, you guys are tough. Like, jokes would just <laughs> fall off a cliff like a fart in a well. Mm-hmm. And they'd fall off a cliff, and I'd be like, all right, I don't know what to do here. And they'd go, come on, come on. And they'd all start clapping, like, get me back up. I'm like, this isn't Rudy. Like, right. the joke sucked. Like, <laughs> Or you hated the joke. You can't just cheer me back on. Like, you guys got to give a little. Right. You know, and then it all turned out fine. I did a Q&A at the end, and that did well, because they just wanted to be talked to. They wanted crowd work. 
And then the meet and greet, they're like, we're huge fans. I'm like, well, where were you? Oh, that's, that's, that's what worries me sometimes with all the content and the podcast is they just want podcast things. I guess so. The bits, they're like, that's boring. We want off the cuff. We want riffing. We want, yeah. we want gay, anal, jizz, shit, tits. Right. I know, I get so jealous, because maybe I'm just a boring comic, but I watch like these Aziz, the Aziz special, he's sitting on a stool, he's got a beanie on, and he's just like, what else, what else? And they're all like, and I'm right. like, how do I get that? How do I get you guys to hang on my every ball sack? You know, everything I'm saying is just like, uh, I, I feel like I, they're they're trying to look away, and I have to go, no, 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 hold on, hold on, this is a good bit. Well, we're also, we're joke guys, so it's like it's harder with, you can't pontificate. You can't be like, joke, 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 and then, hey, here's a long thing. And I'm not right. taking away from that style, because I love that style, too. I like that style, too. I'm just jealous of it. Yeah. Well, maybe you try. Maybe you got to start, maybe that toothpaste thing, you stretch it out. Maybe I'll stretch it out. You guys out. know about toothpaste? I'll wear it thin. I remember the first time I had toothpaste. <laughs> I really enjoy toothpaste. You had the toothpaste? Well, toothpaste. Oh, there are, I could see you the know? people getting up. Like, check. Well, that's how I always felt. Yeah. I mean, I, I started my career in firehouses. So if you didn't, <laughs> yeah, if you didn't call them gay in about 30 seconds, they'd throw their hose at you. It's over. Forget about it. Hey, you guys get anxiety? You just hear the fire. Like, woo, 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 woo. We got a live one here. Then they, yeah. they spray you with the hose like the civil rights. You got to go hard and fast. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's different styles, different strokes for different folks. But how did they get that? How did they earn that? We got we got a couple of credentials ourselves. We got a couple millions of views. We got a couple of hot pods. We got Chuck on the ones and fours. When are we going to earn a little pontiff? But let me ask you this. Do you worry that you have a lot of content that's responding to people? Mm. Do you worry that makes people want to see that? Actually, then they go, hey, hey, Mark, a uh, dirt bike. Right. So you can go, my mother's got a dirt bike or whatever. They want that. I know. That's the problem with giving that. them too much of that is then they go, hey, somebody yell some shit out. You know how good he is off the cuff. Right. They want the cuff. They want cuff. If you give them cuff. They want cuff. That's funny. Bargazzi said the same thing. He was like, well, these heckle videos, you're setting a bad precedent. You got to like, be oh. careful with the cuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to watch out for that. But then the cuff is such a good clip because, hey, you're not burning anything. I know. And then it's interactive. It's fun to watch. It's tightrope shit. So people enjoy it. So you want the views, the clicks, the queefs. Exactly. And they go, well, we want to go see that. But then you're like, they want to see that. They want to see that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I see Springsteen. He's done the two. He's got to play three and a half hours. If he plays for ninety minutes, I go, "What the fuck is that?" Mm. I want you running around with the shirt off and the thing. I want you to play dead and get back up and say, "I'm sure. a prisoner of rock and roll." If you don't give me that, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah, that's yeah. why he's got to go. All right, folks, I'm doing the acoustic show. This uh -huh. is just me acoustics. You go, okay, sure. We're going to see acoustic. You got to say this is the no riff oh, show. Oh, no riff. But you're also about to graduate to theaters and theaters. They're not yelling out at the theater. That, that's nice. That's big. But I do love the club intimacy. And you, can, you can't work on a thing in a theater. You can't go, eh, let me try this thing on uh, Beanie Babies. They're right. going to go, ah, what are we doing here? That's a good point. At a club, you can Beanie Baby it up. You know what I'm doing? I'm doing this Grove 34 in Astoria. It's three blocks from my house. What the hell is that? I don't know. It's on 34th Street in Astoria. Or maybe it's eight blocks from my house. <laughs> um, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's in Astoria, and it's these young whippersnappers. One of the kids lives. I thought you did it. Didn't they say you did it? Ah, uh, maybe. I, Someone I, said I you did a thing. Grove thirty three. It kind of hurt my feelings because I was like, Mark was down the street from my house. What the fuck is that? I don't know this Grove. Yeah, it's Grove thirty. It's on Broadway and thirty fourth Street, mm. which is pretty close to my home. Uh -huh. And they were like, Yeah, Mark was there. He came in a limo. He did an hour. He brought some <laughs> girls. He threw an after party in the room. And I was like, Boy, that's interesting. <laughs> it's all news to me. I was about sixty feet from it, but um, well, whatever. But uh, I'm going to go down there and do some working out. Hey, there you go. Down the street from my house. It's like my dream. It's like the cellar for you. That is a beauty, huh? Nothing like being close to home. Yeah, you want to be close to home. And working out is so fun, but you got to earn it. It's hard. Well, the hard thing with comedy, though, is you're like, I got to go stretch my legs, work out. But you do run out of material. Of course, of course. You're like, I've done all the things I had written down here. I can't just go like, huh. <laughs> Exactly, comedy. exactly, yeah. It's like, uh, well, it's as much as I can stretch it out. Then you turn into one of those queef comics who's like, let me tell you about my day. Let me let me oh. tell you how I'm feeling. And about, I had a phone call with my mom, and it really jostled a thing oh. loose. And you're like, all right, shut up. I hate days. You got to have a premise. Got to have a premise. But here's the clinker. I do this uh, Q&A at the end, and somebody goes, talk about your trans nanny. And I'm like, okay, I had a trans nanny. She was black. He had, he had a dress on. You know, And you're like, what, what are we doing here? Because A... I got no punchline to it, mm -hmm. and B, 
You know what you're talking about, but this this old lady here just got tickets to the Late Show. She <laughs> she doesn't know the. She's like trans nanny. What? what what kind of club is this? Right. Yeah, it's a tricky thing. Yeah, I feel that way all the time because I'm like, there's so many Tuesdays here, but then there's like people that just saw me on Last Comic Standing yes. or people that you know won tickets. Sure. And then I'm like trying to appease them. So every once in a while, I'll be like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Jizz on my father's tits. And then they're like, Jizz on my father's tits. <laughs> what kind of comic is, what is this? this? What does that mean? Yeah. It's, is that code? It's, it's all very difficult. It is. It is. But maybe it's a curse and a bless because, <laughs> you know, we're these quick guys. Everybody's bored. People are signing checks around us. That nobody wants to hear me. Uh, one, one uh, you know, moth flies by and my whole act is ruined. You know, so... We got to keep them. We got to hold them. We got to pull them back in. Yes. And even though it hurts your feelings and it's a lot of work, maybe we're better off being quicker. Well, you want to be quick. I mean, I'm happy with our skills, but it's very tricky to. It's very hard. They want more content, and then you do the pot. It's all. It's like a Newman speech with a male. He's like, it never ends. It never ends. It just keeps coming. But and then uh, you get a good clip out there. It does well. What else you got? What about that one? We uh, saw that one. I know. It's hard. Yeah, the mail never stops. It's tricky. I, I, I sit there at home, and I go, I can't do the content. I don't want to do the content. It's too much. And then I go to do the show, and they're like, we got 31 sold for the late show. And I I'm like, know. Duh. It's tricky. Duh. i got to do the content. <laughs> and, um, oh, those black beans are really having a race war in my asshole <laughs> with the white rice. I also, by the way, I don't know the rules. Like, Sam's like, what are you doing? Take your late nights and put them on your YouTube. And I was like, don't they shut you down? And he's like... What are you, a fucking girl? Just put it on. <laughs> He's like, shut you down. I'm like, I thought they the FBI warning comes in to uh, CBS or do something. It. I mean, Letterman's dead. Conan flew, <laughs> flew to Mexico. You're fine. They don't know what's going on. And then the other thing is, then you post it on YouTube, and they're like, we saw this. I know. It's on the other YouTube. And then it's like, Joe, the Joe, Joe List on Jimmy Fallon has 800,000 views, and then Joe List on Joe List has 11 views. Right. It's my parents. Right. Go, right. But we still hate him. It still I stinks. I watched it once. <laughs> Left a mean comment. But no, put that shit on your Instagram. Just cut one joke out. Yeah, sorry. Joe's uh, he's an anti-masker. Oh um, but uh, yeah, you got to cut it up, put it on your Instagram. And you get you get 10 jokes out of your Letterman because it's it's a five-minute right. set. I so I don't feel like I did it all. I'm like, I did my late night. I got to post it again, I guess, or something. Nah, you just use all the buffalo. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I sat in the room with the Daoud and uh, Avery, and they're like, uh, oh, let's see your TikTok. And you're like, this is kind of... I feel like embarrassed. It's like when you, you know your friends are like, "Let me see your dick," and you're like, "I don't think it's ready." You know, I don't, I don't think I'm proud of it. And they're like, "This is pathetic." He's TikTok. like, "They're like, you're kind of a, you know, you 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 got a following. Like, you should be bigger on here." And I'm like, "I don't know what to do." I post videos they're like, "This is the wrong format. This is the wrong size." And like, here's what you should do: delete the whole thing and start over. And I'm like, "What is this? A teardown? We're doing my house here? Like, get rid of the house, build it again. The foundation is cracked." So I took the I, I listened. I took the TikTok off. Ugh. I started a new one. Oh, I just it makes me want to commit suicide. You feel I'm not like even a kidding? I'm like I can't boomer. do it. Yeah, I, I am a boomer. I have no TikTok. I refuse TikTok. Yeah. I just can't do it. But I'm gonna be the old asshole that makes eleven hundred dollars at a show, and there's seven people going, "We like you," <laughs> but at least you'll be happy. Maybe, maybe, but then when maybe. I'm at the show and they go, yeah, you didn't hit any bonus, yeah, you douchebag, yeah. and you netted 600 bucks, I'm not so happy. Well, you got to weigh it. You got to weigh it. You got to balance. You got to go, what it, where am I happiest and getting fans and and moderation or whatever the hell it is? Curds and whey. I mean, I- What's, I, the, 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 what's the, the thing I'm saying here? Balance? I guess balance. Even? Yeah. Steven? Where Where's the line? Yeah, I don't that know. That you're happy with doing a little bit of content and getting some tickets sold- or no content and less tickets. Right. It's tricky. And so it's it's all fun. I feel good. But I did, like, I was hanging out with my niece and nephew last week, and uh, I'm going back. Again. They canceled. I felt good about this. I got Toronto. They canceled. It's Super Bowl weekend. So I go, I'm going back to Seattle. I'm happiest when I'm with right. Derek and his kids. So I'm just flying back there. 12 hours, round trip. I got the uh, Delta One again, the bed. Ooh. The and bed. I got it because I had all the I have all these unused tickets from COVID. I looked at my tickets. I had a six hundred and sixty dollar unused ticket, free Delta One, essentially free. I spent for it three years ago. I'm going back. I'm going to hang out with the kids. I should find Good a weekend you. and go do the show. But I'm happiest with these kids. So then I made a movie with them. I make these little horror movies. What? They have fun. And I'm like, should I post this? Is this content? That's content. But I posted before on YouTube, and people go, "What is this dog shit? We don't want to see you playing with your niece and nephew." And someone else is like, "This is adorable. It's hilarious." So I don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, I don't want to exploit my niece and nephew, but it is pretty good.
good. It's pretty funny. It's adorable. And I they think. like it. They like it. And so the pedophiles like it. Yeah, some pedophiles can you know watch it and enjoy it. They buy tickets too. So Put a little like, pre roll. Say something beforehand. Say uh, this is just me and my 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 family, and uh, this is just fun. If you're looking for some hardcore. Real, you know, jizz in your father's tits content, then go to the next video. Just say that. Right that's not beginning. bad. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good way to do it. All right, maybe promo. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll help you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, you're, you're a help. good help. Oh, yeah, thanks for burning the Letterman thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, you see? Yeah, you're Just a good, man. good guy. I, I always feel like I'm an idiot because you're like, I'm like, if this isn't too much, and then you're like, eight seconds later, you're like, here you go, you fucking dipshit. <laughs> I don't yeah, know how to burn know, a video or stretch a video. <laughs> yeah. I'm really quite retarded. I, in my mind, it's like romantic. I'm like, huh, guys? I'm an idiot. And I think everyone's like, that act is old. Learn, right. learn a few things so you can sell some tickets, you piece of shit. Right, right. It ain't cute anymore. You know, when the old guy was like, I like a horse. Like, get a car, you fag. Well, Tony V, who's like the wisest and just the best, really one of the wisest people, I, he said, I said to him years ago, this is like 2007, we were doing some silly contest in New York, and I said, yeah, I'm just not good at the, um, the networking, the schmoozing networking thing. And I thought it was, like, cool. And he goes, well, you get good at it. Yeah. He's like, it's part of the gig. And I thought he was going to be like, I know what you mean. Like he had a cigar. Right. And he was like this elder statesman. I was like, I like your cut of your jib. He's yeah. like, no, that's stupid. You got to work on that. I love advice like that. Just yeah. do it. I know you don't like it. I know you think you're cool, but you're wrong and move on. And he's like, it's more important than writing jokes, for sure. Ah. Uh... Ah, oh, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. But then, then oops, sorry. No, oh, I just remember being like, being young and, and bitter and an alcoholic idiot. And Soda would talk to everybody, and he knew every waiter. And I remember being like, "This, he's cheating. He's cheating the system." And then you realize years later, he's just a friendly guy. He's a nice guy. That's just yeah. who he is. Right. I remember being like, "What? I'm trying to do it old school." And this guy. And then meanwhile, he has better jokes than me, and he just likes talking to the bartender. He's like uh, still friends with them. I was like, <laughs> I, my mind, my bitter. 25 year old alcoholic mind I was like he's trying to talk to the bartender right. to get spots and then he's just like 20 years later he's like I was talking to that bartender remember that suicidal bartender who works at Sears now we're still friends and I'm like oh shit I guess yeah, I was wrong well, about that you actually do like those people mm. weird yeah seems like a lot of work but it's weird to talk to a non-comic to me Bert Kreischer's <laughs> like that where he's like chatting it up with a, he's got a guy in a headlock and I'm like I let's know. get out of here let's go to a dive bar he's like these are nice people I'm like I know but they're boring they're and not he's like, comedians I like them yeah I but mean, he likes it. I, this comedians of the cellar, they they know every waiter by heart. They say I love you to them. They're like hugging the waiters. They have a secret handshake, and I'm like, I, but it's not that I think I'm better than them. It's just I think I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, I'm I, like they I, don't want to hear from me. Yeah, I think you're better than me. Yes, that's what I think. It's the other way. I, I don't want to bother you with my bullshit handshake. Yeah, but well, whatever. But that it does seem like there is a a point you can reach, and maybe I'm just hoping here, where you don't have to do all the posting, like. You got your Louis, your Mulaney, your Aziz, your obviously Seinfeld, your Chappelle's. Like I know these are titans of the industry, but Bill Burr is not really doing a lot of "Hey guys, here's my pun about icebergs" tweet, right? You know, or as I'm like, "Oh, put this tweet out," or "Oh, put this uh, clip out." I don't think they're doing that, and I don't think it's hurting them. Right. Well, you got to ask when you get to that point. I yeah. mean, do you think if you didn't post a video for three weeks? All these people would stop buying tickets? Probably not. There you go. But I think I could add more. New people, right. yeah. New yeah. people. So it's a catch-22 year old. It's really tricky. But this has become not funny. So ah, let's get this is fun. This the... is great. Sorry. I think this is great. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Chuck's jerking. How about, how about Mystique? What about Mystique that's in the world of comedy? There, it big. doesn't exist really anymore. Well, that's like Daniel Simonson, I just, I, who's my, literally my favorite comedian. Hilarious guy. Daniel Simonson is my favorite comedian comedian i'm not saying that like hyperbolically he's the comic i want to watch most i watched it at the vu went upstairs and watched it with the fat black wow this guy is doing such real honest and hilarious stuff and it's silly and poignant i mean he's I, he's what i want to be i leave I, wow. I run to my car i'm like i gotta be better i gotta be more like this guy you gotta be norwegian but i asked him i was like come on mindful metal jacket because he's a nutcase he's like a sure. fucking lunatic yeah he's depressed and uh i go you gotta come on this show and he goes well i don't want to do podcast i'm gonna not do interviews he's keeping the mystique Ooh, but smart guy is it mystique or mistake because it's like <laughs> how does anyone know who you are right it's a, it's a much bigger challenge because podcasts are the way in mm -hmm. but i do think they would hurt him What's that? I think they would hurt him. I think he's he might be wrong, but I like where his head's at because I like it too. He's this 
oddball, weird. He completely stands out on the lineup. He's a complete, uh, you completely unique in the lineup. You talk about diversity. This guy is diverse. Yeah, he thinks different. He talks different. He sounds different. He looks weird. And I think if you knew more about him, he would lose that mysteriosity. Is that a word? Yeah, mystique. Mystique. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. X Men. That was sweet because you said yeah, but then corrected it. That was like a, that was I a really like, that was a really I like this guy. yeah that was a really PC way of doing that. Is that a word? Yeah, of course that's a word. Here's the actual word. Right. The word I just said. <laughs> you make a good, uh, good coach. coach. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, he's going uh, mystique because I got no mystique. Everything I, I've said, everything. Same. They I know the whole thing. I'm the opposite of mystique. Well, I think almost everybody has no mystique besides the Titans that you were talking about. That's mm. how it is now. That's the difference between you think of like comedy in the '80s, comedies in the, comedy in the '90s. There was mystique. That's the thing. You don't get to hear anybody until they get on stage. But that's the rub is if we didn't do these things, we would have nobody. It's a different world. That's well, the thing. It's is a different it? world. Then, Not for then, them. Well, Chris, Chris Rock said Eddie Murphy's the only comedian with mystique, but I don't agree. No. Dave Attell mm-hmm. has the most mystique. Mm-hmm. Dave Attell is the comedian that I'm most like, where does he go? Mm-hmm. What right. time does he exactly. wake up? That's exactly what right. What is he thinking? Where does he go is Does great. he really think these things? And it things? makes him interesting. He's exactly. the most mysterious. And he gives you nothing on stage, well, other he, than the best jokes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And when I go on stage, where's the, how's the hog? Where's the hog? So I'm like, all right, so... This, these pods are getting into people's heads and they're thinking about it enough to yell that out at me at a show. So maybe it's good. Well, that's the thing. It's going to be back and forth. It's like you said, a blessing and a curse. People are more personally invested in you guys because they know everything. Exactly. But some of this stuff is also just who you are. You can't help. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't help who I am. When I think something, I say it to whoever I'm with. I go, boy, I think I have cancer, I'm dying. So everybody knows all these things about me. That's just who I am. The other part, the the content thing, is more of a decision to be on podcasts or to not be on podcasts. Mm. I can't not go, ah, I got herpes, my father hated this, all this thing. Sure. You know what I mean? It's hard to not do that. You can't take it back. That's just who you are as a right, person. Right, Joe right. Mackey is a very private person. Yes, mm. yes. I'm a very uh, out there person. Ah, yeah, same. You can't, I'm, I'm you, nut checking. I'm kissing you. Yeah, you yeah. can't uh, take it back. But the rest of the career stuff, we got to get to some jokes here. I mean, sorry. This, is, sorry, sorry. this is like a very special Tuesdays with stories. I, but I was on the edge of my twat here. This Pe- people are going to love it. People are going to love that. Uh, all right. Love all right. Well, you. they love this. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was good. Oh, mystique. That was nice. <laughs> hey, what's the opposite of mystique? I think I'm, I'm annoying. That's the opposite um, of mystique. Mystique, we can't opposite get rid of mystique this guy. is like. This guy's uh, annoying. He's too what much. Is, what is I'm the opposite lot. of mystique? What's an antonym? Yes. Of it's like uh, it's being ostentatious, right? Wouldn't that be the opposite of mystique mm-hmm. because you're loud and you're uh, nah, annoying? Nah, nah, it's got to be revealing or something. Oh, transparent. Transparent. Ah, transparent. There we go, yeah. which is what my dad is. I got He's a, trans. I got a gay parent, yeah. <laughs> um, transparent. Uh, how about this? I was on the subway the other day. New York, New York is terrifying. I think we might have made... Oh, shit. We're at an hour. Yeah. I, gotta, I, gotta, I think we might have made a tactical error. When we started to devalue the police a couple years ago. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> so I, said, I do say, and I said it then, too. Well, I got but, some tear gas for you, but, so uh, that helps. <laughs> that brings them back. But um, <laughs> I'm noticing after we started to devalue the police, things started to get a little hairier around, uh, around yeah. here. Yeah, and the more the city pushed back on the police, the more the city is going through hell right now all over the country. But um, I was on the train. So I'm like, I'm scared of the train at this sure. point. I'm oh. like a full-on... I think you're going to rob a train yeah. in the, the 40s. <laughs> I, I'm full-on... <laughs> I'm full on pussy. I, I'm spending all my money on lifts. I'm taking lifts everywhere. Yeah. Because everywhere I go, it's Hobo Joe is spitting in my face and yeah. thumbing my asshole. It's like an Equinox sauna in here. It's a thickness. <laughs> but no, I'm with you. I'm seeing more dick on the train than I did uh, opening for you know who. So <laughs> it's uh, it's tough. Yeah, it's bad news bears. So I'm on the train. And now I'm, I'm on like a swivel. I'm a, I'm a pussy. I'm just going... And everyone's changing car, and I, I, everyone's talking. It's the talk of the town. Oh yeah, the and, train's wild. And people go, "I won't sit anymore," because when you sit, you're in this like vulnerable position. Yes. But sometimes when you stand, they're standing, so they walk right up yes. to you. And it, it's, it's you're eye to eye. It's terrifying. Yeah, so, the trains are scary. It's like the Holocaust. I'm with you, but I took the train here, and, and if I see like an old lady on the train, I'm like, ah, oh, we're good. He'll kill. He'll, he'll kill. He'll kill her first. Well, it's day day trains. Out. <laughs> day hill hill kill hill one tree hill kill bill volume two. But it's day trains not as bad. Uh, the J train, but um, 
Day, day is not as bad. Jay, Jared Freed. Remember? Didn't you say <laughs> oh, something to him earlier? That. Oh, no. Rondon referenced him earlier. Got uh, I, I got too many podcasts. It's we're two women much. here, folks. What we're are we we're, doing? We've got no mystique. It's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> what do we call it? Transparent. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. all terrible. I, I really might kill myself someday. Not, not soon. Don't write to me. I'll be fine. But just like in a couple you know, days. All right. Um, all right. We'll, we'll get a few in. We'll put them in some in the can. <laughs> a couple bonuses. Yeah. Dance. Before you do it. Um <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. My brain is the train. The train. I'm on the, the train. It's, it's terrifying. It's scary. I'm looking everywhere. So I, I, I'm going to City Winery during the snowstorm. And City Winery, I, I've been taken off. If I'm home in the city, I like to do a bunch of spots Friday at the stand. I'll do five, which I did this Friday. Oh, how was that? Great. That was great. It all locked in? Up and down, locking in. And then you hit up people and go, hey, come hang at the stand. So I had a, a Steve Rogers, Ari, Sarah, Isabel, good crew, throwing around the laughs, good fun. We ordered pizza, fries, the table, the whole thing. So it was great. And then Saturday I take off, but then I get a text about doing City Winery, which is a very cool room. In the in the lower Tribeca area. Yes, and it's but it's like way out in the Hudson River. And I try to keep open mind and go, I like to have my Saturday off. I hate the city on the weekends. I don't like the subway. But I go, eh, hey, you know, I'll do the cool show. Cool show. It's Rosebud, Yamanika, Jay Jurd. I want to be a cool. I want to be cool. Yeah, you, you're cool. So I go, I'm doing the cool show. Three weeks pass, and then it's snowstorm. It's 12 degrees. Right. Lifts cost $180. Yeah. The show is literally in the Hudson River. It's 10 degrees. It's like. Oh, yeah. Auntie Anne, it's a twister. So I take the subway down there, and I take the, the N train to the L train, and then the L, you're going to 8th Avenue, so it's quiet. You don't like an empty subway these days. No. Because it's like one-on-one. -on -one. It's like Hogan and Andre. It's a haunted house. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I'm standing there because I don't sit because it's too vulnerable. So I'm standing. Then there's three attractive women standing there, then like two meatball guys, and that's it. On the, oh, and then there's three women down the other end of the train. And All this right. guy comes in. He looks like Ryan Long, like a white guy, kind of long hair, hood on, no mask. Which I only say because you're supposed to wear a mask. When you see someone with no mask, you think like they're doing a little different yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. This guy does his own thing. So he comes in and he's like talking about Wall Street or the market. And he mm. walks around to these women. And he goes, What do you guys think about the fiasco, fiscal, football? I don't know any of the words. I can't even pretend to talk about these words. Mm -hmm. The up, down, Dow Jones. And they go, Yeah, we don't know. And he goes, Oh, what are you, a bunch of fucking cunts? Wow. Looks like we got three fucking cunts right here. And he didn't look like a homeless guy. He just looked like a regular old dude, like sober. Could you take him? Ah, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, maybe. I had wet boots. Um, <laughs> wet panties. And But your heart rate goes up because it's like yeah. oh, three women. And it's like, okay, well, I, I might have to fight this guy, but I, do I care about these women? If he attacks them, I guess I have to say something. But just cunts. I'm not going to be like, say, pardon me there, soldier. Sure. You know what I mean? I don't give a shit. You probably called them cunts in your brain already. Yeah, I hate every, all women. but um, <laughs> Sure. Not really. Just my wife and aunt. But... Um, <laughs> Well, your aunt's a cunt. <laughs> so, that's her name. Yeah, aunt cunt. Um, I love it. So he's saying, he's calling them cunts, and I'm just sitting there going like, <laughs> like, like fucking Frank Trebin yeah. at the beginning of the movie. I'm like, what is this? And I am like, I'm trying to like wipe my feet because I got wet boot. And you don't want to yeah. like, whoa, and no, slip and fall. No, you don't want to be that guy. But you know, I, I got some fight training a couple years under my tits. Sure. But uh, you know, I'm still frightened. And then you're like, what am I going to do? What if he has a weapon? He's crazy. He obviously wants a fight, for God's sakes. And then it's one of those things where it stops, and 8th Avenue is the last stop. And I don't know if you know the New York City subway system. When you get to the last stop, for whatever reason, it's stay the doors don't open for like a full minute. Yes. So you're just sitting there, and you're like, come on, doors, doors, doors. And he's like, you cunts, you fucking cunts. And they're wow. like, we're all set, that kind of thing. Like, thank you, move on. And finally he goes, whatever. He walks through there, and he walks down the other end. He does like the same spiel mm. down there. And then, by the way, this is the guy I hated the most. These two other meatball chooches, they go, Boy, they look up the women. Oh, they were crazy. That guy was crazy, huh? And then, so he's trying to like swoop in and pick up these women. Mm. And I'm like, you're worse than him, actually. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> he's Those guys are cunts. Yeah, I didn't care for them. But anyways, I didn't have to fight the guys. But it's just that terrifying uh. feeling of just like, oh my God, am I going to be... And Sarah had a similar thing. Sarah was on the train and the lady next to her, the guy stood over her. He's like, why aren't you giving me money? Why aren't Whoa. you giving me money? And she's like the next woman in line, like, ooh. Yeah. And the woman's like, I'm just trying to get home, sir. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to do. Wow. It's, it's like a horror show out here. <sighs> it's getting bad. It's almost like a comic who's bombing, and he's eventually he's like, what's your problem? You got a problem, son? And you're like, no, your just material's not good. That's all. You can't yell at them. It's the same with these bums. They go up and try to get money, and they're, they're, they're getting... They're on edge. They're getting restless. Like, I need the money. You, no one's giving it to me because we're done with it. We can't get every 
if you have 17 hobos on the train, you can't give them all money. No. And they don't realize that. They're just like, oh, why aren't you giving me money? It's like, well, I gave your fucking poor guy friend money. Yeah. But that turns out they're not all friends, I just found out. <laughs> no. What the I hell? Thought were, uh, I thought they were a group. <laughs> Maybe they had some friends that could sleep on a couch. Yeah. But either way, the problem is we had the pandemic. The hobos came, and they were uh, they were uplifted. And then they... They kind of dispersed. We kind of came back, and then there was some tension. And mm. now it's Snowstorm Johnson, so they all go downtown in the right. subway, and yeah. then uh, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Ooh, you got to take a dump. I think I already did it. In my pants. Oh boy, they're soiled. All right, we got to wrap up. We're like way over time here. Yes. <laughs> Where um, are you going to be there, sloppy jalopy? Uh, let uh, me see here. I mean, look at that. Isn't that fun? There's a little whale sticker my niece made. Ooh. I put it on there. I think about it. I got a rock in my, my, my pocket that she That's gave to me. goddamn adorable. Uh, all right. Well, Atlantic City, February 9th. Is anyone coming to that gig? Does anyone go to Atlantic City? I can't no, imagine it's going to no. be crazy. Sold eight tickets to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, come on down. We'll play Monopoly. Atlantic City, February 19th. That's going to be fun. I, mean, I, I imagine it'll be hell if you don't come, so please come. On my face. Uh, Houston, February 15th. That's a makeup gig. Um, Key West, February 24th through 26th. All these dates are on my website now. And then uh, Side Splitters in Tampa, March 24th through 26th. And then I got Laugh Boston, Buffalo Helium. I'm going back to Seattle again. Uh, Jesus. Just, I'm in love with these children. Uh, the May 30th, Tacoma Comedy Club. That's Man. a new date. Tacoma Comedy Club, Monday, May 30th. It's Memorial Day, one night only. And then Cap City in May, uh, Charlie Goodnights, or just Goodnights in Raleigh. So May, I got Austin, I got Raleigh, and I got Tacoma. And then, like I said, Boston and Buffalo in April. Uh, Houston in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. Come on out. This week, I'm in Ka Kansas City, KC Improv. Come on out. Love to sell that out. Omaha, Funny Bone after that. Then we got Columbus Funny Bone, uh, I think Summit in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hmm. We'll see if that gets canceled. La Jolla, California, back to the uh, West Coast. Tampa, well, old pal Sean Murphy's coming out. Cincinnati Funny Bone, Louisville Comedy Club in Kentucky. Dania Improv, which I think is like around West Palm Beach. Helium, Indianapolis. Uh, Carolina Theater in Raleigh. Phoenix at Stand Up Live. Calusa Casino, wherever the hell that is. Magoobies in Baltimore. Addison Improv. A lot of fun dates. Out to lunch on YouTube. I hate myself on YouTube. Netflix. Netflix half hours uh, all, all across the table. And, uh, yeah, check out. I got a Patreon now if you want to get on that. And uh, what else? So you got a special date? Uh, not yet. It'll be early April, but please go subscribe to my YouTube now. I got to get it over twenty thousand. I'm releasing yeah. it on my special. I'm at like almost nineteen thousand. There you and go. Jo I got to plug Joe and Rana. Joe and Rana. It's a hilarious pod. It's very funny. Rana is just the best, and uh, he's not the best, but he's he's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, so go check that out. It's a lot of fun. We're trashing M Night Shyamalan this week. Oh, there you go. He stinks. And. Um, I can't remember. I, I, I open my phone. Once you tell about airplane mode and you get all the... Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. So I'm like, forget done. it. I can't even talk anymore. I got 48 emails. My niece is gay. I don't know what's going on. All right. Thanks, gang. We love you. We got no mystique. We're annoying. We got uh, transparency. M&Ms are woke. We'll see it. hell. Comedy. <laughs>